Welcome to Business Game Changers. I'm Sarah Westall. This episode, I have Kevin Annette coming back and giving us an update on what's going on at the Vatican with Pope Francis being stripped of power. Now, if this type of material triggers you, please turn off this video right now and find something else that will not put you over the edge. But I will be asking questions and he will be talking about material that is sensitive to some. And I just want to give you that warning. That being said, this has bombshell information in this video. He talks about what his sources are. So for those of you who question where he's getting this information, he's going to tell you. Now he can't disclose who they are specifically, but who the, where he's getting it. He also talks about specific elements. And I ask him, where can people do their own research so they can learn about these things? Before you put a comment on the bottom, disagreeing with anything he says about the church, please spend some time doing your own research. Use your own mind and think about these things before you criticize somebody personally. Now, I am all open up for debate below in a respectful manner as far as if he's wrong on some element about the church or or anything that can be constructive. This is a very difficult and controversial subject, but it's something that is important to talk about. That's why I am having Kevin Annette back on my program. I think it takes brave and courageous people to go forward and fight the most powerful people in the world. And those kind of people who are doing that and putting themselves out there, and there are many of them, need our support. So let's get into my interview now with Kevin Annette. Hi, Kevin. Welcome back to the program. Hi, Sarah. You have some updates on what we talked about as far as what's going on with the Vatican and on Pope Francis being stripped of power. Can you please tell us what you know? But before we get into what you know, can you please tell us what your source of this information is? Well, there's two sources. One is uh, someone right inside the Curia, which is the College of Cardinals. That's the the governing body in Rome. Another is a reporter in Rome who has his own sources and inside track. So we can't give names, of course. Well, sure, it's it's protected sources. So that makes a lot of sense. How um, I just wanted to make sure that people understood that these are not uh just rumors or whatever and that we are vetting something because this is a very serious this is a big deal it's one of the most powerful people in the world at least in the minds of an average you know person out there and so we want to make sure that people understand that that at least the sources we have have been vetted that's right um also you have to remember that you know he's a very anomalous figure Jorge Bagaglio, the so-called Pope Francis, because, uh, you know, we can get into that, but it's really being questioned whether uh, he's ever actually held power. And uh, I think this has been revealed on what's happened. Oh, interesting. Okay. So now you were going to say that our last show really made a difference as far as getting out there and helping this move forward. Can you talk about that too, as you explain the story? Well, in a nutshell, the, uh, the the exposure that your story gave, it, it hit some of the alternative media in Europe, and it actually triggered one of our sources to come forward with this revelation. So we can attribute this directly to the last interview we did. Oh, excellent. Okay. So what is it that you're learning? Well, it was an announcement that came from the source, and it was confirmed by the reporter, that uh, yesterday... Um, Bergoglio, Pope Francis, was actually removed from any position of authority within the Curia by three cardinals who are now basically the power that are running the Vatican. That's the Cardinal Secretary of State, uh, Pietro Perlin, Mark Ouellette, who's a Canadian cardinal, and Gerhard Müller, who's a German. And um, in a nutshell, Müller is connected to the Vatican Bank. Mark Ouellette runs all the bishops through his chairmanship of the Congregation of Bishops. And Pietro Perlin is the political power. He's the Secretary of State. And the reason this happened in a nutshell was that um, Jorge Bagaglio's connection with 
Maxime Zoriega, who's the queen of the Netherlands, and she's Argentine like he is, it's about to blow open because they had an affair for a number of years in Argentina. They probably had a child. And um, wow. we have evidence that this child was ritually sacrificed. Now, this, of course, is a standard procedure in the Ninth Circle Satanic cult that you have to sacrifice your firstborn. It's, that's how you rise up through the hierarchy of this Ninth Circle. We, in fact, believe that Maxim Zurieg and he uh, had that uh, relationship. Now, the Ninth Circle, who really run a lot of the, uh, the Vatican, um, they're very concerned about this coming out for obvious reasons. So they need to force Bergoglia out of office, out of any position of authority before this weekend, which is a major conclave of the Ninth Circle in the Vatican, in Rome, rather, um, very near the Vatican. And I, I sent you an image we can actually look at it exactly where this thing is going to take place. It's a church uh, called San Lorenzo um, uh, Pasibas Church. It's literally a block away from Rome, and it's only 100 yards from where I conducted that first exorcism, which is interesting, in 2009, that really kind of opened up a lot of this stuff. So that's kind of in a nutshell what's happened, but there's a lot more to it. Okay, so why is this weekend, you said you sort of got into why it was important, you named, but why is this ritual so important? Well, first of all, this is a weekend where it always happens. It's it's the old Roman uh, ritual called Terminalia, and that's when uh, children and animals were sacrificed ritually in ancient Rome for the crops at this time of year, you know, as, you know, uh, you know, it's a long thousands of year old tradition and um, child sacrifice has been, you know, part of that long tradition. And it's gone on every February 23rd. We reported a few years ago of that happening at the same spot in the San Lorenzo Church. This one, uh, this time is very important because there's a transition of power happening. Bergoglio is being forced out of any position of authority. And, uh, you know, this triumvirate of three cardinals has taken over now. Don't forget, it doesn't mean he'll disappear. They're going to keep him as a public figurehead. How long? Because last time you were thinking that they would make him sick or so there would well. be something where he would say he was sick and then he'd step down and maybe within a year he'd be gone. Depending on what happens and if he talks and if he doesn't play ball, he might die of a sudden illness, sudden heart attack. You know, you know, it's the old Roman practice of killing off inconvenient people, right? Um, but what's interesting is that it's questionable whether Bergoglio was ever actually being pope. Um, First of all, as a Jesuit, he wasn't allowed to become a pope. There's a rule within the Jesuits saying you cannot, uh, you know, become a cardinal or a pope. And yet there he is both. Um, it's kind of like the provision in England where no monarch of the English throne can be a Roman Catholic. The Jesuits in the Vatican have been fighting for centuries, uh, jockeying for power. And so they don't want a Jesuit. And yet there he is, appointed in one day as pope after Ratzinger is forced out because of uh, you know, our exposure of what of his role in covering all that up, uh, child trafficking up. Um, and he's never lived in the Vatican. He's never worn the papal ring. Whenever he makes a pronouncement, the cardinals tend to discount what he says. So he's not acting, you know, th there's this uh, myth about Bergoglio that he's a, a, po a pope of the poor. He wanders around Rome handing out clothes to people. There's no way that if he was actually pope, they would ever let him do that just from a security point of view. So the whole thing has been like a big hand puppet display to get everyone to believe that the Vatican is all different now. He's even named after St. Francis, right? Um, so it's a big uh, PR campaign, but now he's become too much of a liability. So, you know, that's it for him. Why would he play ball? Why would he allow them to do the strip him from the power and then play ball for years? Because they've got him blackmailed. They know about his relationship not only with Maxime Zoriega, who's now the queen of the Netherlands, and we should explore that a little bit, that's very interesting, but his own history in Argentina, where in three years he went from becoming a priest to the head of the Jesuits in Argentina, the superior general, conveniently a year before the military coup happened, and he then became an advisor to the military junta. They murdered 30,000 Argentine people, and he helped traffic the children of their political prisoners. He was in like a dirty sock there helping the junta. So he's got all that dirty laundry background. He's faced lawsuits from his priests in Argentina who accused him of colluding with the military. You know, he's he's got all of his uh, dirty laundry there. And they know what he knows it. And that's how you can control somebody, right? So would an average person, because we're saying all this stuff, and the reporters and people, would the average person ever learn the truth on this? if we don't get 
leaks from the yeah. inside? I mean, could they keep this secret until he dies? Oh, yeah, because don't forget, 99% of people don't want to believe this and they will not believe it. You know, they just can't believe they're so conditioned to believe that people in authority, especially in a church, are somehow morally superior to everybody else and are incapable of doing crime. Uh, people just won't be able to accept this. But this is coming from eyewitnesses, people on the ground, um, you know, and it, it's it's um, being documented. It's a well-known fact. I remember the first time I went to Rome, as I think I mentioned last time, an Italian senator said to me, the mafia and the church and the government, they're all the same people. They'll just care about their money. That's their only priority. And, and you know, that's why they have they can't have a controversial people person at the helm like Bergoglio because he could bring them all down. Yeah. Okay. So now how could an average person who's watching this do some research to learn about this? Where would you say they could start to say, yeah, this really is what's going on? Well, you can't rely really on most of what's on the internet. A lot of it's speculation in, in the alternative media. That's not based on eyewitnesses. Um, but, you know, you could write to us. We do have sources. Of course, um, most of these sources don't want to come out publicly. Um, but the proof is always in what we do. Like when we held our first tribunal, uh, uh, the Kamala Court that convicted Ratzinger, not only Ratzinger, but three cardinals all stepped down, all of them named in the indictment. So the proof is in what we do uh, and, the, and the result in the real world, not just you know, idle talk. Okay, so basically they can, they can just pay attention to who's stepping down. Now, the reporter that, do they, that is one of your sources, do they report on things like this or is it just too controversial for them to even discuss? They try to win it, but they can't because their editors are always influenced not to run these stories. So it has to circulate through the alternative media. But they are often very controlled and shut down as well. Like you might have noticed that our website has been down for two months, itccs.org. Uh, we can't get it back up. No matter who we try, they get sabotaged. So there's a real concerted attempt now to shut down all independent sources of information. Um, but I'll give you an example of how, nevertheless, things happen. Um, this church where this sacrificial ritual is going to take place uh, Saturday at midnight, uh, the San Lorenzo Church, it was actually, it's not, uh, when you look at its history, it's run by a cardinal. There's these things called titular churches in the Catholic Church, and they're, they're under the authority of a cardinal. Well, the cardinal that runs that church is directly tied to this Gerhard Mueller, who is now one of the three guys running the, uh, you know, the power in the Vatican. And... They're all connected to the Ninth Circle. They've all been, been named as, as people who uh, preside at these Ninth Circle rituals. And, and so it's all you have to do is kind of follow the key people and you keep coming across all this stuff, right? And the Ninth Circle is something that people can learn about. They can get, now that has been documented and discussed and there's pretty good information out there on the Ninth Circle. Well, there has been in the last few years, as insiders have come forward, uh, there's two eyewitnesses, Anne-Marie van Bienberg and Tos Nienhaus, who come forward. They were raised within the Ninth Circle. It's an intergenerational satanic cult, and they were raised as children, um, you know, to, to take part in these ceremonies and everything. Um, do you have that image I sent you? I wanted to show folks part of what I'm talking about. Is it possible to project that? Well, can, can you talk about it, and then I'll yeah. just paste it in. Well, when you put it up, you'll notice off to the left, there's a big circle on that computer square. And just to the right is like a parking lot. And just so that is the, uh, it says Chiesa, that's uh, church in Italian, uh, San Lorenzo in Piscopo. That's a little church. That's where the Ninth Circle ritual takes place in a sub-basement crypt right there. Well, if you look to the left in St. Peter's Square, you'll notice there's this obelisk right in the middle. And that obelisk was set up by the Emperor Caligula. Now, he was a depraved, even by Roman emperor standards, he was very depraved. He was cannibalistic. He drank human blood. The, the historian Tacitus describes that, uh, him taking a part in these cannibalistic rituals, exactly the same rituals that go on the, at the Ninth Circle ceremonies. And that, you'll you notice the, uh, the obelisk is lined up along this line. That's where the Roman, uh, col uh, the columns there were from the Roman Colosseum. And that line right running from the obelisk right down the street next to this church is the very site where the first Christians were ritually sacrificed and killed by the Roman state in the year 65. Now, 
In other words, that circle and that obelisk represents a concentration of demonic energy uh, based on human suffering, sacrifice, blood. So it's a PowerPoint directing that that human suffering energy, which is exactly what you do in a satanic ritual. And in fact, in a Catholic mass, which says that drinking the blood of the innocent gives you eternal life. That's exactly what the Satanist believes as well. So um, that site is very important to look at because it's the, one of the centers of, of this kind of nine circle network we're talking about. It's just crazy. It's over the top. I've been hearing this stuff from a lot of people that there's a whole another side to all this stuff and it's it's very disturbing to hear this to say the least so what do you suggest to the average person that's listening to this how they can take something out of this and um be constructive well first of all there's a better response happening in this time so people can take heart that the world is beginning to wake up for example uh, part of our, our posting, the news notice that went out that you got, describes how in response to this uh, Ninth Circle ritual that's happening this weekend, the Spanish government has sent a diplomatic note of concern to one of these guys who's now running the Vatican, the Secretary of State Pietro Perlin. And it says that, you know, they're concerned, they're asking Interpol and the Italian police to investigate this church. And we've also dispatched, the ITCCS in Europe has dispatched uh, people to try to disrupt the ceremony like we've done in a number of other places. And um, this one of the guys running the Vatican now, this Canadian Cardinal Marc Ouellette, he presided at a Ninth Circle ritual in Montreal at the Marie Rendemont Cathedral uh, that we also stopped. So there are people converging on the spot to try to save these children's lives uh, Saturday night. Um, and, and, and the Spanish authorities. The Spanish government, and they're the ones who objected. They, they're the ones who helped cause Ratzinger to step down after they looked at our evidence and sent a note saying Ratzinger could face arrest if he ever comes to Spain. Then he resigns five days later. Uh, so, in other words, people, we've shown that people can have an effect. The tide is beginning to turn. And so, what you need to do is a number of things. Tell every Catholic you know to stop giving money because they're colluding in a criminal conspiracy. Do not put money in that collection plate. Don't even attend. You can do, you know, worship in your home or whatever. Um, and we're campaigning as well, starting in uh, April, uh, what they call Holy Week, April 14th to 21st, that's Easter week uh, and Good Friday and, and then Easter on the 21st of April. We, there's a whole new campaign to get people to pressure the governments to cut off uh, financial support, uh, tax exempt status to these criminal churches, especially the Roman Catholic Church. There'll be protests, uh, teach-ins, all sorts of activities in Western Europe and North America about all of this stuff. So that's, you can write to us, thecommonland at gmail.com, and we can send you out a lot more information. Also, uh, tomorrow, I'm sorry, on Sunday, we have a program, a regular Here We Stand radio program, where we're gonna be talking about all of this in more detail. We're gonna have an eyewitness, Dave Staffan, who was raised in the Ninth Circle cult talking about it. That's um, uh, 6 p.m. Eastern this Sunday at bbsradio.com slash here we stand. Well, so the church, give, people give money to the church, and, and how much of it ends up going back to the Vatican versus staying in their community to help people? We figure uh, in the Protestant churches, something like three quarters of it goes to the national church body. In the Catholic church, about 90% of it goes to the Vatican. And uh, That's terrible. There, it should well, stay locally used, to help people. It's used primarily to... Uh, uh, and there's this whole show we could do on the financial ties of the Vatican Bank to the 10 major banks in the world. Basically, the Vatican Bank is used as a money laundering system, not only by the mafia, but by all the top banks I've, in the yes. world. Yes, I've uh, had that confirmed by detectives. Yeah, Deutsche Bank, uh, B, a, B of A Corporation, Goldman Sachs, Lehman Brothers, Merrill Lynch, Barclays, they all use this uh, you know, offshore accounts and then laundry through the Vatican Bank. So that's where people's money is going to fund these criminal bodies, uh, heavily invested in the arms industry, in uh, you know, uh, genetic engineering, like all of these corporations are heavily invested, the biggest landmine company in the world owned by the Vatican Bank. That's where people's money is going. Well, their money should stay. They should say, okay, let's just funnel this money and help people locally. Let's yeah. Let's not stop giving money for people that need it. But let's not give it to them. Let's pull this money, the local 
churches to say, let's do what we're here for. Let's keep our money and use it for the local communities. Use it for the people. That's exactly what people need to do. And we've shown that our power is in the grassroots. You know, if you take one action, we've proved this in Canada over many years. As soon as we started occupying Catholic churches and getting people to stop giving money, they were they responded immediately and, and pressured the government to issue apologies, get court settlements. That's where they're weak, right at that. At the, they're worried about their financial uh, givings and their public image. Well, because I don't want people to stop. I don't want people to stop doing what is so great about all this stuff. Don't stop doing public good because you're dealing with a very awful thing. Figure out how to use the fact that you're together in a community and keep the money to help people locally and turn it into what you thought it was and don't buy into all the negative part of it. I just, um, I, I, I think that if you just give up and say this is all evil and I'm giving up and I'm not going to have any part of it anymore, that's not the point. The point is, is to say, okay, we're all here together to do something good. Let's get rid of the bad part and take it like you used to say when you were a priest you said the problem was i took it seriously i took what i was taught seriously and i think go the ahead problem, yeah the problem is the institution is evil structurally evil it's set up to force out good people and elevate the bad there's no reason to be attached to these institutions people can have their faith but they don't need to be part of these churches you know church of england church of rome the united church in canada like these these institutions that have blood on their hands, they're just sapping the energy. And, you know, I mentioned that that uh, thing in, in St. Peter's Square. It's and it, it gathers this dark energy. Uh, that's exactly what churches do. They take people's goodwill and then they use it against them. Uh, they use it to traffic children, um, kill children. And, you know, it's we don't and cannot be part of that. Under the law, if you are, you're an accessory to a crime. So we have to leave, right? Uh, come out from them and be separate, I think it says in the Bible. Yeah, that's to do something good. Okay, well, how can people get hold of you? The common land at gmail.com, murderbydecree.com is the website, a lot of this information. And, um, you know, like I say, tune in on Sunday, you'll learn a lot more there at bbsradio.com slash here we stand at 6 p.m. Eastern. Is there anything else you want to share with people before we end this program? Well, just to tune in every Sunday to that show, because we're going to be having weekly updates about what is happening with this campaign, uh, building towards, uh, you know, Easter week in, in April, where we want to get people boots on the ground out there doing these actions. So please contact us and learn more on Sunday on our show. Okay. Thank you so much, Kevin. I really appreciate this. Thank you, Sarah. Finally, I have the mini shockwave stun gun and pepper spray combo available directly. These powerful defense devices are incredibly small size. It's an ace up your sleeve for self-protection. It doesn't pop up on x-rays and scanners, so you can conceivably take it places most weapons can't go. Self-defense should never be complicated, and the mini shockwave and pepper spray combo are very easy to use. I plan on making sure every woman in my family has one of these and any teenager boy or girl should be carrying these around as well if you feel that they're safe and can handle these with all the problems going on in this world i would want my loved ones to be as protected as possible together they're only 29.99 see the link below for this amazing deal